Welcome back. The staff and management of the Water and Sewage Company in Guasco came bearing gifts to students of the Camille Henry Memorial School on Thursday. The company sought to bring some holiday cheer to the student body. Solange Alfred reports. Smiling faces could be seen all around as the students of the Camille Henry Memorial School were the lucky recipients of good tidings from the management and staff of the Water and Sewage Company, Wasco. Principal of the Camille Henry Memorial School, Beverly Diodon, expressed her gratitude to her giving neighbors, saying that this is just one of the long list of things that the business has done for the school. We are always very grateful. Wasco has been extremely supportive of our school over the years. Um, from the inception, Wasco has always supported the school. Any initiative, any endeavor that we undertake, they will be on board to support us. They always come on board. Um, they really do foster and encourage the collaboration between the community and the school, and we are appreciative of that. Yes, and this year, of course, they've decided to come again but to put a smile on the faces of our children who will really really be deserving of it so we really want to thank them for that the handing over of gifts took place at the camille henry school where the students got a chance to interact with the management of wasco and then received their presence Communication and Marketing Officer at Wasco, sherry Ann Gillard-Williams, says that the festive season of giving inspired Wasco to reach out to their neighbors to spread some Christmas cheer. And of course we at Wasco take our corporate social responsibility very seriously and this activity is just one of the initiatives that we um, have every year. So um, last year we went to a different school and we threw a party for them, a Christmas party. But this year we're staying closer to home and we're just next door at the Camille Henry Memorial School to deliver gifts to the students. Some of them are underprivileged and we've decided to, to take up this initiative to spread some Christmas cheer to them as well. The festive season is a time when many corporate entities give back to communities in various ways. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Solej Alfred. Two local companies recently benefited from a productivity measuring exercise organized by the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council. The companies got to find out how productive their enterprises have been over the past five years and the necessary steps to increase their productivity. Productivity measures how efficiently production inputs such as labor and capital are used to produce a given level of output. Thus, productivity is considered a key source of economic growth and competitiveness and serves as statistical information for many international comparisons and country performance assessments. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, NCPC, was established to identify key issues related to competitiveness and productivity in St. Lucia, while providing timely recommendations to policymakers, the private sector and other stakeholders. During the recent testing of its innovative productivity measuring tool with two service providers, Fiona Hingson, director of the NCPC, said one of the mandates of the NCPC is to measure productivity. And we realize that firms within the private sector, they are having difficulty in measuring productivity. So the NCPC designed a, a productivity tool named ProTool to assist firms in measuring the productivity. So we've done, the, today we actually had a uh, testing exercise. We did a testing last year with manufacturing firms. This time around we were doing testing with services firm in order to, um, to test the tool using their data for us to see how we can improve that tool. Hingson touted that the Pro Tool can be a vital measuring instrument for all areas within the business sector concerned with productivity. She said the near future for the Pro Tool is greater accessibility as an online application on the NCPC's website. This tool is not only a quantitative tool, it is also a qualitative tool where firms will be able to answer questions like leadership capability and management, they will be able to answer questions on the business processes, as well as the sales and marketing, look at what is happening within the firms in terms of innovation, and they will be able to get the results on, from that tool, as well as the tool will provide them with recommendations on how they can improve on the business processes, as well as how they can improve 
in enhancing productivity within the firm. The two businesses which participated in the testing program were Cox & Company Limited and Phone Bay Inc. They had high praise for the quality of the Pro Tools processes and final report. Chris Dahomer, Managing Director of Phone Bay, and Peter Lord from Cox & Company shared their views on the Pro Tool. I think it's a, it's a great idea. It's a step in the right direction. It, a, it encourages businesses to go evidence-based in terms of determining where they are. I also think it's a, it's a, it adds to the old adage that uh, if you can measure, you can manage. And it encourages management by the numbers. The, the tool goes more in-depth. It makes you aware that there's more that you can do in the company to get the figures that you want instead of going the normal um, orthodox way. All right? So it would pinpoint things that you might have been aware of or it might bring up things that you never knew existed and you can implement them in your business and you work on them uh, and you'll get better results. The participants also seized the opportunity to make recommendations to enhance certain aspects of the Pro Tool. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Unit, Glenn Simon reporting. The St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority is undergoing major maintenance work at the Diglo Sanitary Landfill. The authorities are urging citizens to bear patience with the delay in service as a result. The St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority has come under fire by truck drivers accessing the Diglo Sanitary Landfill. The authorities who are currently undertaking maintenance work of the compound is urging site users to exercise caution and patience during the visits to the landfill. Information and Communication Manager of the Solid Waste Management Authority, Emmeline Je, expressed that this maintenance work is necessary to ensure that solid waste is disposed in a sanitary manner. And part of those improvements involve a small access road, which is the main cause of the problems for site users. The Central Solid Waste Management Authority is presently undertaking major work at the Deep Blue Sanitary Landfill. And that really involves a lot of maintenance works in terms of drainage. Um, importantly, though, is the access road. Um, over the past few weeks, we've been having a number of issues in terms of the conditions, making it a little difficult for users of the site to access and access comfortably. The work is, goes on while the service is prov provided to the public. Um, so um, there would be um, a waiting time for those accessing the site, um, some of it in excess of an hour. Um, of course, we ask individuals to exercise patience because, you know, in order to improve the conditions, we really need to slow down the process and, of course, allow some work to be done because really and truly we cannot close the landfill. Je explained that the collection service on ground has been impacted as a result of the delay in the landfill operations. However, the works being undertaken are of utmost importance for the upkeep of the site and to ensure a favorable work environment that is free of environmental hazards. We would have to undertake the occasional maintenance work and to ensure that, you know, it, it's not a, a, an environmental hazard but rather a place where people can come in and dispose of waste and of course feel comfortable and also know that there, is no, there are no hazards, um, no negative impacts associated with them coming on to the landfill in order to dispose of waste. The Dago Sanitary Landfill serves the north of the island. Residents in the north of the island should anticipate a later collection time until the landfill works are completed. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Solaj Alfred. Students around the island were granted the opportunity to tap into their creativity and become involved in efforts at controlling the rodent population in St. Lucia. More in this report. The Environmental Health Division in the Department of Health and Wellness recently hosted a rat trap competition allowing students to make cost-effective and innovative rodent control mechanisms. The competition was aimed at raising awareness on leptospirosis and providing students with the opportunity to play a part in reducing the impact of rodents on the population. Environmental Health Officer Charlotte Charles says she's very pleased with the level of student participation and also parent and teacher involvement in this activity. 
The number of traps we saw submitted, like I said, we had over 44 traps submitted. To me, it was a true testi testament of not, how, of not only how creative and innovative our students are, but it also showed the dedication of parents and teachers. From the crafting and construction of the traps, we could see that parents helped their students. During the judging process, we heard a lot of, my mommy helped me, my daddy screwed in the screws, my sister helped me. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Merlin Fredericks Jim says, it is important that students are knowledgeable about the signs and symptoms of leptospirosis. Sometimes it may look like a simple flu or viral illness, um, the headache, the back in, uh, muscle aches, but it can also progress with high fever. The urine can change color and get very dark or very bright yellow, or bright orange. The eyes can change and get yellow. And we know that if it's not treated, it can actually have fatal consequences. But we want everyone to know and children remember that leptospirosis can be treated. It can be treated, it can be cured. So if you or anybody around, you may observe your family members, if anybody has those signs and they're home taking their little medication, etc., they're not getting better, encourage them to go to the health and practitioner where they can get an antibiotic to cure them and prevent them from um, getting worse with this disease. Joshua Rennie of the Odsa Combined School took first place in the rat trap competition, while Vianney Plum of the Dame Paulette Louise Primary School came in second. Third place went to Antonio Philip of the Dame Paulette Louise Primary School. The Innovative and Creative Rat Trap Award went to Tanisha Jules of the Canon Laurie Anglican Primary School. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Funa Neptune. You're watching the Hot 7 Nightly News, still to come, sports news with Tennyson Glasgow.